Hi, welcome to this tutorial about robust t-tests with R. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials about robust statistical methods with R. You'll find the link to the playlist for those other videos in the description. In this video, we look at the independent samples t-test. So we want to compare the means of two different groups to each other and test whether they differ. First, let's look at the data. We see that in the group 0, the median is lower than in the group 1. We also see that the variance of the group 0 is higher than of the group 1, and we have outliers. And if we have outliers, then probably the normality assumption is violated as well. So, we don't have normality, we have outliers, and we don't have homogeneity of variances. So more or less all basic assumptions we have for a normal student t-test are violated. Nevertheless, let's start with a t-test or with a student t-test. And here are the results. It's not significant. Next possibility would be the Welch t-test. There we don't have the assumption of equal variances. It's still not significant. The next option would be the Wilcoxon rank sum test or Man Whitney U test. Since a test based on ranks, it can deal with outliers and it can deal with non normality. However, even the Man Whitney U test has assumptions. If you want to compare two means with this test, you need an equal shape of the distribution in both groups and you need more or less equal variance in both groups. Unfortunately, you don't find those assumptions in all textbooks. So in this case, with unequal variances, it's doubtful whether it's correct to use the Wilcoxon rank sum test or the Man Whitney U test. Nevertheless, let's run it. And here we would get a significant result. So this test does recognize that for group 0, the values are lower than for group 1. So if we can't rely on those tests, what can we do? There is a test, it's called UN's test, that can deal with non-normality, with different variances, and with outliers. You'll find a link to the classical paper by UN in the description. In R it's implemented, for instance, in the WRS2 package. If you haven't used it yet, you have to install it once, of course. I have installed it, so I just load it with a library command. What is UN's test? It's a trimmed Welch test. It's a Welch test, so it can handle differences in variances. And it's a trimmed test. So the most extreme values on both sides of the distribution for both groups are cut off. It has two consequences. If you cut off the most extreme values, you cut off the outliers. Unless, of course, you have an extreme large number of outliers. The second consequence, the problems arising from non-normality are not in the center of the distribution. It's not that important whether in the center of the distribution it follows a normal distribution. The problem with non-normality are the tails of the distribution. If we have a deviation from normality there, then we get false standard errors and therefore false test results. So by cutting off the tails, we at least gr greatly attenuate the problem of possible non-normality. The default value for this trimming that is, for cutting off the most extreme values, is 20%. So, on both sides of the distribution for both groups, the most extreme 20% are cut off. And with the rest of the data, a Welch test is run. Here are the results. It's significant. The trimmed mean difference, that is, the difference without the extreme values for both groups, is this. And here's a confidence interval for this trimmed mean difference. So those results clearly show us that group 0, if you don't look at the extreme values, has smaller values on average for the dependent variable than group 1. If you don't want to cut off that much, you could reduce the trimming factor. And those would be the results in that case. In most cases, I would use the default trim factor of 0.2. There's another version of this test, a bootstrap UN's test. Especially if you reduce the trim factor, I would strongly recommend using the bootstrap version, 
because bootstrapping doesn't require normality, so you have additional safety against possible violations of the normality assumption. With bootstrapping, I would use at least 5000 bootstrap samples. So this test calculates UN's test 5000 times. Based on those 5000 samples, it calculates the UN's test. Here are the results. Again, it's significant. My recommendation would be to almost always use the bootstrapped UN's test. The only exception would be with a very small sample size, because then you can't trust bootstrap results. So if in the future you run a t-test and you want to be sure that you don't have any problems with the violation of assumptions, in addition run the bootstrap version of UN's test. And if that confirms the results of your t-test, then you're safe. If it doesn't confirm the results of your t-test, then I would trust UN's test more than the t-test. So that's it for a robust t-test. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Thank you so much for watching.